in the cheapest contractor because they aren't going to agree to all the things that you need them to agree to in your contract later on. Um, but again, here uh, we spelled out very specifically exactly what types of insurance that contractor is going to need to have. And it's going to be different, again, depending on what they're doing. If they're, if they're setting up staging and lighting, there's going to need to be some, some language in there about that they properly engineered that. That they understand that there are microburst winds, that there are, there's weather conditions, and that they need to set up the equipment um, to be safe. And they, they are warranting that as part of the agreement. If it's a food vendor, again, they, they not only need the general liability and workers' comp and all of that that others need, they also need products liability for the fact that somebody can get sick from that food. And any, really, any vendor who's selling something to the public, um, particularly if it's mechanical, electrical, um, could injure them. Um, you know, short of uh, uh, the, the, the rubber knives and things like that that they all sell, the hats, sunglasses, things like that, probably not a big deal. But as soon as they're selling electrical and mechanical equipment, you should probably make sure that they can show that they've got products liability too, so that if the, the public's injured from those products that they bought there at the fair, you don't end up with part of the claim as being the, the location where it was purchased from. One of the things that our sheriff's department has requested from us for um, to have the vendors not bring is rubber knives and guns because when it's dark outside they can't distinguish the difference and they don't know whether or not it's a threat. And so far we haven't got the commissioners to agree to that. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's, it is your fair. You should be able to control it reasonably. And if, you know, if the, if the sheriff is concerned about those things, I think that's a reasonable thing for you to do. And again, along with the insurance requirements, we've got the indemnification agreement because again, there's no reason to ask for insurance if you're not requiring them to indemnify and uh, hold harmless. That's, that's the first step. First, to make sure that they understand if we get sued because of what you're doing on our fairgrounds, you're going to pay our claim. Then you ask for insurance to prove that they're going to be able to live through with that promise. It's very simply all, all that that's all about. It seems really complicated, but that's all we're asking for. Um, this is now an actual contract that, that you know, provided uh, as an example um, for services. And again, just like, excuse me, just like in the bid specifications, we spelled out all the different insurance that the contractor is going to need to provide, the different limits and things like that. And again. I'm not going to give you any silver bullet, how much insurance do we have people provide us because, it, again, it depends. What are they doing for you? How much of it are you controlling? How much of it are they controlling? Long of a period of time? You know, all of those sorts of things. So as the, as the event's coming up and you're trying to work out those details, share the information with the county attorney, get on the phone with me, and we'll talk about you know, is, is this a $1 million policy that we're looking for, or is this a $5 million policy that we're, that we're going to be needing to ask for? Um, if it is for a service or, or, uh, that you're contracting for and you're going out to bid, we need to have that discussion again before the bid specs are provided, um, not at the time of the contract. And we've got a good hold harmless indemnification agreement here. Here's that clause that I talked about earlier, entire agreement clause, where again, it, 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 it would be nice if you can find a way to have one agreement for each type of, it, of, of person, um, and make sure that you've got everything in that. But if you end up with general rules, and then an application form, when you get to the actual contract or permit that they're gonna sign, Make sure that 
you, you're not just using one of these entire agreement clauses because most contracts have that. You don't want the entire agreement clause if there are things in their application and in the, your general rules that you want to apply that aren't also in this agreement. So either uh, do the entire agreement clause, but also say this agreement and the application and general rules make up the entire agreement. But don't, again, I know a lot of you are using copies of agreements that you scabbed from one of the other it's in the room two years ago and it's been working so you're not going to ask any more questions. Just, that's, that's dangerous. You need, you need to make sure that all of these are written for you and your situation. Sorry. I was just going to add you could incorporate the other things into the library. Okay. Any other questions? Somebody else's contract that works really great for them is really bad for you. Let's just put it that way, very simply. You're, you need to have your contract for you. And just got a couple of other uh, provider contracts. This one is for um, uh, the uh, actually a uh, um, an attraction at the fair. Or, excuse me. No, this was for a uh, performer. And again, we've got liability and insurance, hold harmless agreements, all of that is there. And also had a, a separate one, and um, Daniel sent me over that used very similar agreement, but a little bit different when it was an attraction versus when it was a performer. And I thought that was good that, that they recognized the difference, that there was a little bit different relationship between the county and somebody who's coming to perform to make money, and somebody that you're asking to come and provide an attraction to draw people to the fair. Because that is two different types of relationship. But in both, again, they they did a good job of saying, you know, if we get sued because of something you do, you're gonna pay our claim. If you get sued because of something we do, we'll pay your claim. That I think that's reasonable. Questions? Comments? I just have one more. Um, when you're doing the identification clauses across the board for all the different types of agreements, you should still make sure that everyone, that they're similar. So everyone is already indemnified. So it's always the fair board, the county, employees, volunteers, and other associates through all of them um, so that you have. Yeah, so they can't argue that in one, you specifically only wanted to indemnify the fair board and the other county employees. That's a really good point, because plaintiff's attorneys will look for those little things, inconsistencies. Yeah, and every, in every other one of your agreements, you said that they needed to indemnify, that you, you specifically listed that they needed to indemnify um, their volunteers, and in this one you didn't, ergo, you don't have to indemnify your volunteers in this, in, under this, Again, a little bit of time up front is going to really, I'm not going to say, okay, a lot of time up front <laughs> is, is going to save you a world of hurt later because have any of you ever been deposed in a lawsuit before? Joanne has, I'm sorry. Best day of your life, right? <laughs> it's an ugly, ugly situation. If you want the fair to just grind to an absolute halt for a year, have a lawsuit filed against you. It, it, it's a mess. It's, it's we don't want that happening. So as much of this as we can do ahead of time, the better. And again, that's that's what we're here for. I, I, I haven't met a county attorney in any of the counties yet that refuses to work on this stuff. Sometimes they need a little prodding. Sometimes they need more help, less help. Um, I just really appreciate, you know, Neil and Jody have been really good at um, calling me with questions. And uh, <coughs> a lot of times it's just a simple matter of talking it out as to, um, you know, how we're going to deal with the situation. The important thing is, is they need to know what you're up to. Don't hide from them <laughs> what the real relationship is between you and the other party. It doesn't matter. 
doesn't matter that the search and rescue is going to run a day. I'd like to have it different, but if that's the way it's going to get done, that's the way it's going to get done. We all just need to recognize we're going to have a lot less protection under that. Let's make sure that the county attorney knows that and does as much protection as we can given that situation. I didn't give you two a lot of time to talk. I'm sorry. You did such a good job of just providing the, the, the samples. But they really are truly your, your best uh, best support group there at the county attorney's office. So do you use them? And if, if you're not getting a, the help you need from your county attorney, let me know and I'll check you know, out. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you. Everyone have Thank a safe you. trip. Yeah. Yeah.